Hey guys, welcome to my 200th video special. I'm sorry for all the delays, but the video's finally here. Since all my other specials have taken a more serious tone, I decided to keep up with the tradition and make my first countdown list. If you followed my channel, it shouldn't come as much of a surprise that I really love video game music. That's why I've decided for my first list I'm going to go through my top 10 favorite credits songs in video games. I've always felt that the power of a credits theme is very underrated. When done well, it can pack in a lot of emotion and get you to reflect on the game you just played. That's why I want to gather my 10 favorites and talk about what makes them so great. I will say now that this list will have pretty big spoilers for the games each song on the list comes from, as you might expect from a list like this, so be careful. And just remember, this is all my opinion, so if you agree or disagree, make sure to tell me some of your favorites in the comments. With that out of the way, let's get onto the list. Katamari Damacy is one of the zaniest, wackiest games Japan has ever blessed the Western market with, and I'm so glad they did. It almost seems like a game that didn't actually come out in America due to how well Japanese the game is. It's just so weird and out there that when I played it for the first time, it blew me away with just how charming and creative it was. The music in Katamari has always been my favorite part of the game. Disregarding the fact that I don't know a lick of Japanese, the music still always makes me smile whenever I listen to it. Katamari of Love perfectly combines the triumphant feeling of rolling up the gigantic Katamari at the end of the game with the game's general craziness. From the powerful melody to the hilariously cheesy over-the-top vocals, this ending theme easily makes my list. For the number 9 spot, I've got a pretty obscure pick. Teleroboxer is a virtual boy game, and one of the better ones at that, in which you fight a giant robot from a first-person perspective. The game itself is pretty interesting, and I would go as far as to say that it's actually pretty good. But what I love most about Teleroboxer is its credits theme. I actually only found about this game through watching a TAS of it, and since every match in the TAS lasted about 5 seconds, I didn't hear much of the soundtrack aside from the ending theme. But the one song I did get a good listen to has become one of my favorite songs of all time. The Virtual Boy has a pretty interesting sound chip. It's a bit more advanced than the Super Nintendo's, yet most of the games opt for NES-style drum sound effects. The song itself starts out pretty cool with an upbeat, almost jazzy style to it, but about halfway through shifts into a beautifully celebratory tune that really hammers in that satisfying feeling of beating a game, and the ending chord perfectly wraps up the song and the entire game. Earthbound is well known for being a very charming and emotional game. Its emotional impact that it leaves on the player is what a lot of fans would say is the game's biggest strength. Music in a game plays a big part in setting the tone, creating atmosphere, and empowering the emotions that the game tries to convey. The soft, beautiful melodies of Earthbound's credits theme perfectly reflect on the emotional tone the game has, especially towards the end of the game. It's a very powerful song to listen to after just having finished a game like Earthbound, and depending on how invested in the game you got while playing, it could even be enough to make you tear up just listening to it.
The Ape Escape series is one of the most underrated series of 3D platformers in my opinion. When people talk about classic 3D platformers, you often hear about Spyro, Crash, Jack and Daxter, but Ape Escape is often overlooked. The third entry in the series boasts the best soundtrack of the three in my opinion, with an amazing credit theme to go alongside it. I just love the funkiness of the bass and trumpets, and the melody of the pheromone sounding thing is absolutely beautiful. It's another pretty short and simple song, but it's just so good. It also gets really emotional when you see Tomoki turns out to be alive after the explosion and reunites with the rest of the cast as shown through a slideshow that plays alongside the credits. There's really not too much to say about this one honestly, it's just really good. If you've followed my channel for a while, you should know that I really like Undertale, especially the soundtrack. Toby Fox has cemented himself as one of the greatest video game composers of all time with only a single game under his belt, and that is a huge accomplishment. So it's honestly no surprise that such an amazing composer would be able to pull off such an amazing credits theme. Bring it in guys, it's a huge mashup of nearly every main theme in the whole game, with each character's theme playing alongside that character being shown enjoying their new life on the surface during the staff role. It then pulls a fast one on you as the song transitions into Last Goodbye reminiscent of Azrael's theme as you play a little minigame trying to avoid the names of backers of Undertale's Kickstarter campaign flying toward you. The songs themselves are absolutely beautiful and reflect amazingly on the game as a whole and the journey you take through the whole game. Still Alive is a very rare case. As a credits theme, especially when compared to the rest of the songs on this list, it doesn't have any atmosphere that ties into the feel of the rest of the game, or a triumphant feeling of accomplishment, or much of an emotional tone either. It's just a regular song, but it's a damn good song. Still Alive is one of the most recognizable video game songs ever written, and for good reason. It's a very pretty song, and it's pretty upbeat, which is a huge contrast to the incredibly bitter, passive-aggressive lyrics sung by GLaDOS herself. While she sings them with the same upbeat prettiness the instrumental part of the song has, has, the lyrics themselves are still really salty sounding, and it's really funny having that kind of contrast in the song. While it may not be great as a credits theme per se, it plays during the credits of the game and it's a really really good song. Still Alive is nothing short of iconic. This is where things really step up. Generation 2 of Pokemon is regarded by many as among the best and most influential generations in the whole series, and musically, it's definitely nothing to scoff at. Gen 2 has by far my favorite soundtrack out of the whole series, and its ending theme is definitely no exception. It's powerful, it's triumphant, it's victorious, it's emotional, it's everything a good credits theme should be. And that key change, oh, that key change, beautiful. It really gets me every single time. 
The way it slows down and transitions into the main theme at the end is just brilliant. I really don't have any more to say about it, it's just amazing. Just listen to this masterpiece. This entry was really hard for me to decide on, and when it came down to picking a favorite, I just couldn't. So this spot is a tie between Super Mario 64 and Super Mario World. And before you call me a cheater, it's my list and I'll do whatever the hell I want with it, so deal with it. Anyway, these two songs are both incredible. Mario 64's credits theme is both really beautiful and incredibly triumphant, as is Mario World's ending theme. The bridge in the Mario 64 credits theme is a powerful and emotional breakdown, and the transition into the second half of Mario World's staff role is absolutely brilliant. Both of these songs have amazing qualities and are both some of the greatest songs out of the entire Mario series. Personally, I like Mario 64's theme more, but I think Mario World's theme is better, so I just settled on a tie for this spot. Katawa Shoujo is a game that, once again, if you've seen my Mario paints, you would know I'm a huge fan of. If you don't know what it is, I'll briefly explain it. Katawa Shoujo is a freeware VN dating sim that takes place in a high school for physically disabled people. And without context, that sounds absolutely awful, but when you actually sit down and play it, you'll find some of the best writing in any media ever. I'm not exaggerating either, it's incredibly emotional and beautiful, and it makes the player really think about life and relationships among many other things. One of my favorite aspects of Katawa Shoujo is its soundtrack. It's one of the best OSTs of all time in my opinion, and consistently matches the tone and empowers the emotion conveyed through the writing at any given time in the game. The credits theme, Romance in Andante, is no exception either. It's very short, but it's nothing short of absolutely beautiful for the entire minute that it lasts. It's a short piano piece that plays alongside a heartwarming slideshow of concept art for the character whose route you had just finished. The resolve at the end of the song is incredibly powerful and ends the whole game absolutely perfectly. Ah, Kirby Superstar, one of my favorite games of all time, more specifically the remake on the DS. This game is absolutely packed to the brim with fun and charm. Beating the final minigame of the original, Milky Way Wishes, will grant you with what is in my opinion the greatest credits theme in any game. It starts off quietly and slowly, then gets into the main part of the song where you hear a beautiful flute melody accompanied by strings that sound just as pretty. Then it gets into the second part of the song with more background instruments that make it even more delightful. It then adds in an amazing remix of the Green Greens theme, and finally ends with a beautiful resolve with the flute. The entire song is just pure bliss. Everything about it is just so beautiful. Have I said that enough yet? This song packs so much emotion that it's hard to listen to it without tearing up at least a little bit. A perfect end to an amazing game.
Thanks for watching my very first top 10 video. I just wanted to say some thanks to all of you guys for supporting me and inspiring me to keep uploading all the way to 200 videos. Well now it's at over 250. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for all of you. Also, big thanks to my pal Uko for doing pretty much all of the editing on this video. Their channel will be in the description. If you liked this video, let me know what you thought about it in the comments and maybe share it around. If this does well, I might try to make some more videos like this one in the future. If you're new to my channel, check out some of my other videos. You might like them.